Quiet Place, Day 1 is about to be released. But to fully understand the success of this saga, it is necessary to know the history of the two previous films, which will give us a little more context, although chronologically this installment is a prequel and would be the first. We will miss details that are important to know in advance. That is why in this video we will do a brief summary and review of A Quiet Place 1 and 2. It all begins with the first installment of 2018, a film that initially went unnoticed. Almost cult, it began to gain relevance due to its good reviews from those who saw it and recommended it. Under the production of the well-known Michael Bay, the film is scripted and directed by the same protagonist of the film. John Krasinski. This duo had already worked together in the excellent film 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Recommendation for those who enjoy action footage. It had a budget of just $17 million to have a collection of $340 million. A true commercial success. The story places us directly in a city in the United States, where the survivors are forced to maintain strict silence. We still don't know why but we find out a few minutes after starting this adventure. Since in what seemed like an exploration to find supplies, a little boy takes a toy that will be the trigger for a catastrophic death. The family is traumatized, especially her sister, Reagan, who was the one who gave her the toy even though her father had told her not to take it. She feels guilty, she also has deafness, something very counterproductive for this post-apocalyptic world, since she would not know when there is noise, and therefore when monsters are attracted to it. For several minutes the film takes time to show us what everyday life is like, in the total absence of sound. The situation is going to get more complicated since Evelyn is pregnant. A fatal oversight since more than a year has passed since the death of her youngest child, and the birth of the baby could be her doom. It can be noted that between the father, Lee has a complicated and distant relationship with Reagan. And after an argument she goes for a walk alone, quite irresponsible. The father of the family gets along better with Marcus, with whom after a walk we finally hear some sound, since together with the noise of the water they manage to camouflage their conversation. Meanwhile at home, Evelyn is home alone, and begins to have labor contractions, going down the stairs to the basement she steps on a nail. That she will make him release some objects that cause the noise necessary to attract the creatures. With an emergency plan, she manages to turn on some red lights, a sign of danger and warning for her family. By managing to distract the creature, she is able to locate herself in the bathtub, where she begins labor, trying not to generate any noise but it seems like an impossible situation and the creature stalks her every time she gets closer. Luckily, Lee and Marcus arrive, and light some fireworks that distract and attract the monster and release a suppressed scream from her mother. When Reagan returns to the farm she understands the situation and comes to help. And here is an important revelation not only for this installment but for the rest of the saga. Reagan has a device that helps her with her deafness, but since it was working correctly, it generates a low-frequency sound wave that affects the creatures, although she is unable to notice it. Although they managed to help her mother, it was only temporary, having already foreseen this situation with the baby already born, they prepared a type of incubator, isolating the sound as much as she could. Still, it is not enough and the creature returns to the house, breaking some pipes that begin to flood the basement. The baby cries and by applying what he has learned from the water he can hide behind it, but the flood is getting worse. Meanwhile the children, Marcus and Reagan are tasked with turning on a signal to warn the other nearby farms with survivors. To do this they must climb on top of a silo. As a result of carelessness, they cause noise and attract the creature, 
but here she really discovers the power of her artifact and manages to make the monster flee due to the pain it causes her. That's when they are reunited with their father, but the danger is not over yet, they are attacked by another creature while they protect themselves in a van. They cause an injury to Lee and her son begins to scream in his desperation. Seeing that the situation cannot be resolved any other way, she decides to sacrifice herself for her children so that they can flee, but not before saying goodbye to her children saying that she loves them in sign language. attacked again and see on the table all of their father's attempts to achieve a successful implant for his daughter, he remembers what happened in the silo and with a microphone and speakers amplifies the signal to sufficiently disorient them. The creature so that the mother can finish it off with a shotgun. The security cameras show that they attracted more creatures but they are ready to fight, and the movie ends. With a solid script, the film immerses us enough in a post-apocalyptic environment that we have only the information necessary to understand the plot, perhaps this was the success to continue this saga. Public reviews were generally positive for those who appreciate suspenseful footage and a bit of post-apocalyptic horror. The acting in general is very well done, especially by Emily Blunt, who already had experience in this type of films. Unlike John Krasinski who was best known for his humorous role in television series such as The Office and was the voice of numerous characters in films and animated series. Here he can play a good role but he excelled most with the script of an original story who he himself said took inspiration from filming like Don't Breathe and Get Out. The story continues in 2021 with the second installment, which arrived in theaters a year late as a result of the pandemic. Although it was a pleasant surprise that it started out as a prequel, Providing information on how this invasion of alien creatures began. We see a normal, everyday life in a city until the disaster begins. Unfortunately it was only an introduction to the story. And here there is a time jump where we see the family already moving from their farm and exploring a little more locations, but now they are prepared with a device to repel creatures. During a tour they activate a trap, which attracts a creature but is also under the sights of a stranger. Thanks to the device they are able to eliminate the creature but they are still helped by an old friend of the family, Emmett, played by the great Celian Murphy. He takes them to an underground shelter where he lives alone, and his attitude has become that of a cold and emotionally detached survivor, since after having lost his entire family he only lives the days he has left and tells them that they cannot stay. While they are temporarily sheltering Megan hears the song Beyond the Sea on the radio, she tells them that it has been playing for four months straight. With a hunch from Megan she believes that there are survivors, and also if they manage to reproduce her hearing aid on the radio antenna they could kill all the creatures. Since it is a suicide mission, they refuse to embark on the mission. Even so, in an irresponsible act, she escapes and embarks alone on her way to the coast. 
The next day Emily notices her disappearance and asks Emmett to go look for her. Although she refuses, she cannot ignore the fact that he was also a father and goes out in search of him. It doesn't take long for Megan to get into trouble and on a train she finds herself cornered by a creature, luckily Emmett arrives and manages to rescue her from it. Now the two set out to try to complete Reagan's theory even though it seems like a suicide mission. Meanwhile at the shelter the mother must leave her son Marcus with the baby in her care to go in search of medicine. But while exploring the place she discovers the corpse of Emmett's wife and cannot contain a scream, which attracts a creature. For this reason she must hide in a soundproof tank but which can only be opened and closed with a lever from the outside. So, once inside, their oxygen minutes are numbered. Meanwhile Reagan and Emmett arrive at a port where they are ambushed by a group of bandits. Having no alternative but to create a noise to attract the creatures, they manage to escape by jumping into the water, and thus discover that the alien monsters do not know how to swim. Escaping on a boat they arrive at an island, where they discover that there lives a colony of surviving people with a strikingly normal life, making noise, music, speaking normally in other activities. Which leaves them very surprised. So the leader tells them that they were a group of several boats that were escaping but only two reached the island. When we heard the hurricane sirens. Now we return to Marcus and the baby about to suffocate in the tank but Emily arrives and rescues them in time, but the danger continues as the creature continues to prowl the shelter. What seemed like paradise turns into hell when they discover that one of the creatures managed to reach the island on a boat. This is a little doubtful in the script but it serves to give a good action scene when they must escape to the radio station. Radio to complete the mission of emitting the sound from the hearing aid. By managing to avoid a little danger they do it. Then, already in the shelter and being cornered, Marcus tunes the radio and increases the volume to incapacitate the creature that was stalking them to defeat without further difficulty. And this will be the weapon that all survivors will have to defend themselves. And the movie ends. Although it was not as praised as the first installment, since it has many script conveniences, it was received well enough to consider continuing with the story. Public reviews place it in the same range as its predecessor and at the box office, with triple the budget of the original to add renowned actors such as Cillian Murphy, it was once again a success. Since with $55 million, 297 were raised. What seems to have reached the ears of the scriptwriters and producers was the idea that the public wanted to know more about the alien invasion, that a 10-minute introduction was not enough. And that is why they got to work and we find ourselves at the door of the new installment that we hope will reveal much more details of this apocalyptic universe about to be unleashed. As an additional criticism, the PG-13 restriction that producers impose to reach a broader audience greatly restricts and limits directors. Not being able to be more explicit in the scenes, with the least amount of blood possible and making it look less realistic. Even so, they have achieved a good product that gained a number of fans waiting for this new delivery. A Quiet Place, Day 1. If you like this type of content, support this new channel with a good like and subscription. Until a new video.